Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. A deadly gun battle between police and the men suspected of assassinating Haiti's president, Jovenel Moise, has been raging in Port-au-Prince. The country's police chief announced that security forces had shot dead four of the suspected attackers and captured two more. Mr. Moise was fatally shot and his wife was injured when attackers stormed their home early on Wednesday. The government has declared a two-week state of emergency as it chases down the remaining killers. Japan has declared a state of emergency in Tokyo, which will run throughout the Olympic Games, while organizers have also considered banning all spectators from attending. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga told reporters it would remain in place until the 22nd of August, but he did not give details on the restrictions. Coronavirus infections are rising in Tokyo as the 23rd of July opening ceremony edges closer. There has been widespread opposition to the Games in Japan and calls for them to be postponed or cancelled. Russia has offered North Korea COVID vaccines once again amid reports that a harsh lockdown is leading to extreme hunger. No. Pyongyang has refused vaccines and aid from a number of countries. It has instead sealed borders to try and keep the virus out, but that has affected trade with China as it relies on Beijing for food, fertilizer and fuel. Kim Jong-un has acknowledged that the country is facing food shortages, describing the situation as tense. Officials have announced they believe there is now zero chance of finding any survivors from the collapsed apartment building in Florida. At this point, we have truly exhausted every option available to us. Rescue teams are switching from a search and rescue mission to a recovery effort. The decision comes about two weeks after the 12-story Champlain Towers south fell in the middle of the night. 54 victims have been found and 86 are still missing. No survivors have been found since the initial collapse and rescue crews say many victims were found in their beds. Afghan troops have recaptured government buildings in a western city which was attacked by the Taliban. <laughs> Afghan special forces carried out operations to drive Taliban fighters out of Kunduz city as the war reached the gates of the provincial capital. The Islamist insurgents have been advancing for weeks, an offensive that has accelerated as the United States pulled out of its main base in Afghanistan, effectively ending its two-decade intervention. A U.S. court has suspended Rudy Giuliani from practicing law in Washington, D.C. amid fallout over his baseless claims about the 2020 election. All the, oh my goodness, all the networks. The move comes after Giuliani, who led Trump's legal challenge after his election defeat, was also suspended from practicing law in New York last month. A court ruled that he had made demonstrably false and misleading statements to courts, lawmakers and the public in trying to overturn the results of the elections. Giuliani's license will be revoked while disciplinary action over his practices are considered. The Israeli army has destroyed the house of a jailed Palestinian who killed an Israeli teen in a drive-by shooting in May. Flames and smoke emerged from the house in Termasaya after the army blew it up. The military said that the jailed Palestinian opened fire at a busy West Bank intersection, seriously wounding two Israelis. It said he fired from a car near a Jewish settlement before driving off. South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, has started serving a 15-month jail sentence for contempt of court. Shortly before a midnight deadline, Mr. Zuma left his homestead in Kandla in a convoy of vehicles to turn himself over to police. Zuma was handed the jail term last week after he failed to attend a corruption inquiry. The former president also faces a separate court case relating to a $2 billion arm deal in 1999. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.